So what do these fancy terms mean, mern, maven stand for? The M stands for MongoDB and that is a database solution. You can spin up a MongoDB server or use some hosted services and then use this as a database where you store data. MongoDB basically is an alternative to other database solutions like MySQL. The main difference is that MongoDB is a NoSQL database, which means it does not work with relations, not with records and tables, instead with documents and collections. And below the video, you also find links to detailed videos and tutorials on MongoDB if you want to learn more about that. So it is our database where we put the core data of our application. The E, which we also find in all these terms, stands for Express.js. Express.js is a Node.js framework and that takes us to the N. N stands for Node.js, unsurprisingly, and that in turn is a JavaScript runtime. So it's an environment where we can run JavaScript code. However, it's not in the browser where we typically run JavaScript code, but it can run anywhere. And for example, you can use Node.js to spin up a web server and in the end write some server-side JavaScript code. So you can write your entire backend logic, the entire server-side logic with JavaScript here with the same syntax you use in the browser, but with a different set of features you can use. For example, unlike in the browser, on the server side, you can work with files, with HTTP requests, and so on. Of course, there you also can work with MongoDB, which is your database. Well, and Express.js is just a framework for Node.js to make working with Node.js simpler. Because if you would work just with Node.js, you would have to reinvent the wheel over and over again and implement everything on your own from scratch. With Express.js, certain things like manipulating incoming requests, parsing data, manipulating responses, routing, all these things become much easier. And of course, just as with MongoDB, I do have complete tutorials and courses on Node.js and Express.js, and you find link to these resources below the video as well. Well, and that leaves us with the blank here, with the A, with the R, with the V. That stands for Angular, React, and Vue, and these are all front-end, which means browser-side JavaScript frameworks. Or in the case of React, it's of course a library, as I know is important to some of you. Now, what's the idea behind these frameworks or libraries? These allow us to write powerful client-side, which means browser-side, applications fully driven by JavaScript. The idea here is that we can build mobile app-like experiences where everything updates and happens instantly without a new page being rendered and returned by the server because we run all the logic that updates the UI and that affects the UI in the browser with the help of JavaScript and these frameworks or libraries. So if we have a look at the big picture here at the example of Mern, but it would be the same for the mean stack and for the Maven stack, we have two ends that communicate with each other. We got the front end, which is our client, the browser, and we got the back end, which is our server here. Now on the client side, we would use React or Angular or Vue.js, and in the end, therefore, we use JavaScript because all these frameworks and libraries use JavaScript. On the server side, we would use the three other technologies, Node.js, Express, and MongoDB. Now, on the client side with React in this example here, we're responsible for the presentation, for the user interface, for updating it, for validating user input there, for showing feedback to the user, so for doing everything which the user sees. And we're using a framework or a library there, like React or Angular, to provide an experience that is really, really good and really, really fast, where unlike in traditional web apps, you don't have to fetch a new HTML page for every click. Instead, you can update the existing page, which of course is faster. We do that with an approach which is called a single page application. We build a single page application there which means we only ever get one HTML file returned by some server, and then JavaScript is loaded to continuously update the HTML code in there to re-render the UI when needed. This single page, by the way, is not necessarily served by our Node backend. It could be served from any server. A simple static host suffices here. Now, back to the server side. There, we run our business logic, as you could call it all the logic that doesn't belong to the client because of security reasons or because it's too heavy to run in the browser, that runs on the server. 
There we also store data that could be files, that could be data in the database. Side note, MongoDB runs on a separate server, a database server, but our web server made up of Node and Express talks to that database server. Our front end, our client side application does not directly talk to MongoDB. I also got a video on that, of course also linked below this video, if you want to learn why our front end does not directly talk to the back end. Well, and what we would also do in the server is manage any authentication logic. Verifying password email combinations, that's of course something we want to do in a place where the user can't access or manipulate our code, and that's only the case on the server side. Because on the client side, as you also learned in another video, well, I got many videos as it seems like, well, on the client side, you can't hide your code. So therefore we do that on the server side. Now, how do these two sides communicate then? How are they connected? They communicate through requests and responses. That's how the web works in the end. Now, important though, since we build a single page application on the front end, we send background requests, which means we send requests via JavaScript, which don't cause a re-render of the page or a reloading of the page to happen or a new HTML page to be fetched. Instead, we stay on the existing page in the existing JavaScript app and just send the request and eventually get back some data which we can use to then update and manipulate the existing page with the help of JavaScript and our chosen library or framework. Now that of course means that in these requests and responses we don't exchange any HTML code, instead we typically exchange data in the JSON format. That's a machine readable format based on JavaScript in the end, it looks a bit like JavaScript objects and that is perfect for exchanging data like for example user data that was entered in the client and needs to be sent to the server or a list of products that we might be storing on the server which we want to send back to the client. So this is the big picture. This is how these pieces are connected and how they work with each other. Now let's zoom in on the backend because there the question is how exactly does the backend look like if it does not send back HTML pages but instead JSON data. Well keep in mind we got these decoupled ends and therefore we actually need a backend which is an API which simply means uh, an interface, uh, a web server which we can send requests to to trigger different actions on this backend web server. And we can build such an API in two different ways. Well, or at least there are two very popular ways of building that these days. Approach number one is that we build a RESTful API. REST stands for Representational State Transfer and I got a full series on this channel where I built a REST API with Node.js and MongoDB from scratch. The alternative to building a REST API is to build a GraphQL API. Now the differences here can be viewed in a separate video which I also released and which is linked below this video as well. But the main difference is that for a REST API we provide multiple entry points, so called endpoints, which are made up of different URLs, different paths on our domain where our web server runs and HTTP verbs which are used for the requests that are sent to these URLs. So that you could send a post request to slash product to for example trigger a create new product action or a get request to slash products to return a list of products. And it's up to you, the creator of the API, which endpoints, which combinations of URLs and HTTP verbs you want to support. For a GraphQL API, it's not the verb path combination that matters. Instead, you have exactly one path, one URL, and one HTTP verb, post typically, which accepts requests. But since you accept the post request, this post request body then contains a query. It contains a query written in a standardized query language, GraphQL, which can be parsed and understood by your web server to then do different actions based on the query you wrote. Now, just as in the REST case, it's of course up to you, the developer of the API, to decide which kind of queries you want to support. You don't expose your full database through this GraphQL API to the front end. Instead, you then run logic on the web server and then you might con communicate with your database there, do anything else or send back an error if you don't support this kind of query. 
So that's the difference. A query which we receive on the backend versus different URL HTTP verb combinations that trigger different actions on the backend. In both cases, we execute code on the server when a request reaches our server. And therefore, this backend is detached from the front end, it just exposes its endpoints or its single endpoint and the supported queries. And then any client can be connected. Not just our single page application, but a mobile app could be connected to the same API as well. Because this backend in the end then does not care about the exact client that talks to it. So now that we know how it looks like, how it works technically, the question is why would we use the MERN, the MEAN or the Maven stack? Well, one big advantage is the separation of concerns. We have a separate frontend and a separate backend. And therefore, if we're working in a team, parts of our team can focus on the frontend, other parts can focus on the backend. And of course, that is possible in other tech stacks as well. But here it's particularly easy because we have that strong separation between these two ends. In addition, we use technologies that allow us to build a, a powerful frontend, if you want to call it like this. With that, I really just mean that we build a frontend, which is a single page application, which gives us this mobile app-like experience, offers a great user experience, updates instantly, and therefore in general tends to, well, just feel good to our users, of course, if done right. For the backend, we have the advantage that it's really flexible. Since it's an API, which, as I explained, does not care about the client at all, you can connect any client to it. You can send requests to the right endpoints or with the right query command to this API from any client. Could be your single page application built with React or Angular or Vue, but it could also be a mobile app built with any technology there. It could be anything. It could be another server talking to your server even if you needed that. So you got a really flexible and reusable API there. Well, and last but not least, this entire stack when using MongoDB, Node, Express and such a framework is made up of high performance technologies. Now that's a difficult turn though, because you actually can build any kind of web application with any kind of tech stack in a good performance or in a bad way, if you're doing it right or wrong. And so therefore it would be wrong to say that you couldn't use other technologies and achieve the same or better results. It's just that for these technologies, we also got a lot of resources to learn them. We also got a lot of patterns which we can follow that typically result in good performance and in well-written code. And therefore I'd say it's particularly easy to use these technologies and build good applications with them. But as always with programming, you can definitely also mess up things if you want to or if you're not careful. Now that we know how these stacks work and why we in general might wanna use one of these stacks, the question is which one is the best one? We have the mean, the mern and the maven stack. Which one should you use? I'd say at this point, it's time for a really detailed analysis. So let's have a look at what's different. The mean stack uses Angular, the Mern stack uses React, and the Maven stack uses Vue. What does this tell us? It tells that the choice about which stack you wanna use only depends on the front-end framework or library you wanna use. And therefore, the mean stack is best if you prefer to work with Angular. The Mern stack, Surprise is best if you prefer to work with React. And now when would you think is the Maven stack the best one? Indeed, and I know this comes as a surprise, it's best if you wanna work with Vue. So it all comes down to the question, which of these choices, Angular versus React versus Vue, is the best one? And here the answer in the end just is, it really does not matter, or to be precise, it comes down to personal preferences. You can build any kind of web app with any of these technologies. There is no best or worst one. There are strong opinions in the community. Some people love Angular, hate the rest. Some people love React and hate the rest. And the same is true for Vue. Now, I don't feel as strongly about this as other people. I like all three options. But in the end, this is up to you. And I do have a complete article and video where I compare these three alternatives. So that might be interesting to you if you're not sure with which of these technologies you wanna get started or wanna hear my opinion on that. 
But in the end, it really just comes down to which front-end technology you want to use. And that, in the end, as I just mentioned, comes down to personal preferences. There also is one other thing that really matters to you. And that is the MLRP stack. Never heard of that? Well, I just invented it, or at least I think I did. Well, this could be the acronym for MySQL, which also is a database solution, Laravel, which is a PHP framework, therefore PHP, which is a server-side programming language, and then also React, or of course, if you wanted to, Angular or Vue instead. And what I really want to say with this slide here is just that whilst the mean stack and the MERN stack and also a bit the Maven stack are popular, it's not like you have to use these technologies. You can combine all these technologies that are out there in any way you want. You can also build an API with PHP and Laravel, a REST or a GraphQL API. You can then connect that to your React or Angular frontend because you just sent the same kind of requests. This API does not care about your client and your client does not care about the language or the technologies you used for creating your API. So you're really flexible there. And of course, instead of MongoDB, you could also be using MySQL because both with Node.js and Express, as well as with PHP or Laravel or any other server-side programming language out there, you can talk to any database solution, not just to MongoDB or just to MySQL. Just because certain combinations are, are popular or you find a lot of tutorials on them does not mean that you're restricted to them. And I, I feel like a lot of people think that you can only use MongoDB with Node. You can only use a Node Express API with React or with Angular. And that is simply wrong. You can build your backend with any tech stack of your choice and connect it to any frontend. You're not limited there. So definitely think outside of the box there. Take the existing stacks or the popular stacks. Explore if they are good for you if they make sense for your next project, if you like the technologies, but if they don't, also consider alternatives like this one.